So pro, this is from Spokane, the Protein for All. We have a website. And so on the website, um, it's still new. I'm still trying to get feedback on what, what will be helpful. There's this talk on the website, and, and it, there has a 30-minute preamble talking about uh, parent allies, uh, talking about their experience and food deprivation and what that means. And it's, it's a nice video for parents to watch if they have that kind of attention span. Um, there's also uh, a couple of podcasts and handouts, uh, if you want, and uh, we're um, also writing up like who, who each, like Thurston County has a system in Spokane, so we're just trying to, to have it be a resource, and it's new, and so if you have an idea, great. If you want to just support and find out what's going on, please sign up for the newsletter. So do, any other questions about kind of how to do three days of protein or how, how you might use this with, with your clients or how you're connecting to people? Um, I just had a question about if you've had any insights onto the phenomena where I'll listen to this lecture and like, oh, right, 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 or I'll see something and, oh, yes, yes, you know, and then when it comes time to wake up in the morning and doing it, it's like, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, which, why is that a, a, such a problem for people yeah. to be motivated into? Yeah, so uh, there's a neurotransmitter called dopamine, and dopamine uh, is the, is sort of, you know, it's, it's, he often talked about in terms of addictions, but our entire life is an addiction. I mean, on, on the most basic level, like all of you seem to be addicted to getting up and putting clothes on in the morning. <laughs> Anybody not consider that possibility, right? <laughs> like, I know, that sounds ridiculous, right? But there, there, dopamine helps us automate a lot of things. And so the only way that we can unautomate something is to really put a lot of planning around it, and then have, have to, and and studies are really clear. Is first we have to plan when, where, how, why, and put some structure to it, and then we have to say, oh, by the way, I'm doing that. I'm going to get up in the morning, and then we have to like have. Sometimes we have to have some accountability. Like it's just really hard, and then it's going to take minimum of 30 days on top of that, and I because it's not habituated. It's not habituated because you don't have a neural net for it. Like the 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 time that is most challenging is when you don't have a neural net for it. And so I, I often tell. So two and a half years ago, I was in a motor vehicle accident. So I was doing martial arts four days a week, CrossFit once a week, walking in the morning, and 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 couldn't exercise at all. And I, w I was talking to the physician man managing, and I was like, uh, and I'm dyslexic, I'm like really dyslexic, and part of why I study all this brain stuff is because if I don't exercise, I can't spell and I can't put two and two together at all. And I was like, I gotta exercise. And he's like, how about recumbent bike? And I'm like, where would you do that? And he's like, at a gym? And I'm like, oh. I've heard about those places. And I refer people to those places, but like not for me. <laughs> like I have no neural net about me going to a gym, sitting on a recumbent bike to get exercise. That's crazy. Like, and the amount of internal resistance to do that. And so like I talk about having an internal committee. So I had to sit down with the gerbils <laughs> and ask the journalists, like, what was more important, right? And, and make deals with them to go try it for a week. And, 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 and then we got to watch, uh, I, don't, I don't remember what a crappy show we got to watch, but like that <laughs> solved that problem. And, uh, you know, but, but I had to hook into that I wanted to feel better, right? and that I was going to be committed to doing it for a minimum of two weeks before I decided that it was, and that was enough before, before I was like, oh, I got to do that every day. But because I had other neural nets I could, I could connect into. But if, particularly if you're working with people who have never done something and there's no neural net, right? I worked with this one uh, kid when I worked with kids in psychiatric crisis who had lived on the streets. And she didn't understand, 
She understood, but she couldn't change the behavior that food didn't come out of garbage cans. Like, that sounds crazy, right? But the dopamine held into place, and so, like, for just for the transition, we got a small garbage can and put it on the table, on the plate, so that she could associate plates, garbage cans, and foods, so that we could take the garbage can away, right? And, and just because we can think it doesn't mean we can do it. So that's a really long explanation for it. Other questions? I would just, the handouts about the different um, yeah, places yeah. in which you can use. Yeah. When the parent allies came, came to see to, uh, after this judicial training that we did, um, they, were, they, really, they really saw the value of offering it to parents as, as particularly in a couple of different settings. Uh, the shelter care hearings, because those are really tough. Uh, evaluations and, uh, and visitations, because the, those, are, those are where they have to be at their best. And so we, put, we worked together with um, Elise, Jason, and Kim, if you know them, to put together these handouts, and they were great. They were, I, I drafted something, and they're like, this is ridiculous, this will never work. And so anyway, I, and I'm more than open to more feedback. Um, but, so these are what you can hand out if it, help, it helps them to, to have something to hang on, because it doesn't necessarily make sense to the parents in the moment. And, and I like how, how I've heard it said is that I want you to be at your best, and your brain needs the fuel to do this. Please eat this. And um, you know, some of the stories that are coming back from the parent allies that I'm talking to is the parents who get uh, in Spokane. They've collected some data, and uh, over 70% of the parents come into shelter care hearings without eating within the last 12 hours. And um, and uh, what they ate was not necessarily protein, not necessarily nutritious. And the, the people who, and, not all, and they're offered a protein bar, not all of them accept it, but the ones who do accept it, they're like, oh, that actually really helped. And it helped because they could hear what the judge was saying, and they, could, they felt like they could articulate uh, what happened more clearly. And which you know looks at sort of procedural justice. So so what people believe, you know what what lawyers think is justice versus what the common person thinks is justice. The common person just wants to be heard. They want their story and they want to be seen. And so that that's what helps us there. And then evaluations. I think I told you the story about. I tell the story. I think I just told you the story. The DV story. Did I tell you the Jason's DV story? So Jason, Jason Bragg, uh, he's awesome, and he decided that this was the right thing to do. And he often takes <coughs> men to, to evaluations, and particularly domestic violence evaluations. And this is what he does, is he makes a sandwich from his own house, and he gets them in the car, and he's like, here, eat this. And they're like, I'm not hungry. And he's like, eat this. <laughs> and okay, like this is gonna help it go better. Okay, and, and, and what Jason reports to me, because I'm always like, so, like, how does it help? And I don't know if it actually helps the father, the person in the evaluation. I mean, I think it does, but that's going to be hard data to get. But what Jason says is if he gives a guy a sandwich before the evaluation, he doesn't get a phone call right after the evaluation saying how awful that was and how mean they were and how they didn't hear their position. He just hears them the next time, and they, he's like, yeah, you know, that was a reasonable conversation about what's going on in my house. And how I think it helps the parents in evaluations is I've talked to uh, my own clients as well as parent allies, and when people are stressed out in an evaluation, they just stop playing the game and they don't even try. And so they're not even giving accurate data because because their lizard brain's in charge and they're like, screw you. So, I mean, it's not even getting good data <coughs> to know what's going on. And they're not in a position to think about the, the consequences of doing that, right? Uh, and then in terms of uh, 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 visitations, like visitations are so 
charged for everybody.